Okay, so we're going to cover gas laws. Today we'll specifically go over what's called the combined gas laws. And we'll talk about the relationship between um, different um, variables when it comes to gas. <clears throat> so there are uh, four variables when discussing uh, samples of a gas. And so in the opener, we did some of those uh, samples. <clears throat> we did uh, use some of those variables. So the variables are pressure, volume, temperature, and then um, the number of molecules. So for pressure, volume, and temperature, we have particular uh, units that we use to, to describe those variables. Oops. So let's go over each one. So for temperature, uh, we always use Kelvin. Um, those are units we always use when it comes to gas. For pressure, there's several. One could be atmospheres. We could use millimeters of mercury. We can use what are called kilopascals. We can use what's called tor. Uh, tor and millimeters of mercury are pretty much the same thing. Um, and then atmosphere and kilopascals. For volume, there's different ones. You can use liters, milliliters. You might see cubic centimeters or um, those are the major ones you'll see. So, um, oftentimes in word problems, we have to identify what the temperature, pressure, or volume are. And so if you know these units, it'll help you to determine um, which type of um, variable you're looking at, temperature, pressure, or volume. You'll also hear something else called STP, and that's standard temperature and pressure. So standard temperature is zero degrees Celsius. Um, so uh, zero degrees Celsius is actually 273 Kelvin. And then standard pressure is one atmosphere. It could also be 760 millimeters of mercury or tor, or 101.3 kilopascals. So just so you know, one atmosphere could equal 760 millimeters of mercury, tor, or it could be 101.3 kilopascals. All right, there's, there's three laws we have to know. And the three laws, um, they basically compare the three variables. So the first is Boyle's law, which is the relationship between pressure and volume. So what is relationship? Is it direct or indirect? Um, so as volume goes up, pressure goes down, right? And so this is an indirect relationship. So if you remember from your graph, if I was a graph pressure, versus volume. Low volume means high pressure, right? So like starting here, and then high volume means low pressure here. So the line would look like this, right? Where it goes down, that would be the general trend. And so the equation for this is, they would be multiplied by each other, pressure times volume equals pressure two times volume two. I'm going to go over each law, and then I'll show you how we can solve this, how the problems are solved. The reason why I do this is so you don't have to memorize each law. There's actually, what we do is we combine all the laws, and we call this the combined gas law. And you can solve any problem um, relating to these three equations or these three laws using the combined gas law. So you only have to memorize one thing versus three things. But we just have to know what is the relationship between pressure and volume. Um, just an example, um, so uh, when you breathe, you're actually using Boyle's Law. So when you're, um, so this muscle down here is your, called your diaphragm right here. And so when it contracts, it actually causes your, your um, lungs to contract as well. And that, what that does is when volume decreases, pressure increases, so that causes the air to rush out of your mouth. And then when it relaxes, the volume increases, and so... Uh, what happens is pressure decreases and then air comes in. And so you actually use Boyle's Law when you breathe. Another one called Charles Law. So Charles Law is the relation between volume and temperature. 
So as the temperature increases, you would expect the volume to increase. Why? Because as the molecules start moving faster, they increase the pressure. An increased internal pressure would push, um, if you're allowed to move the walls out of the way, they would actually um, cause it to expand. So as the volume increase, or sorry, as the temperature increases, you would expect the volume to increase. And so this is a direct relationship. Uh, so if you did a graph, volume versus temperature, a low temperature would be a low volume, right? And then a high temperature over here would be a high volume. So a direct relationship would look like that. And then um, the equation that goes with it looks like this. Now, let's not worry so much about the equation. What I want to concentrate now is understanding that the relationship between volume and temperature is direct and that um, this is how the graph would look. Now, what you did uh, um, yesterday is you actually measured, now this is not really volume per se, um, but um, when the pressure is exactly zero, you would expect zero volume. And so if you, we would figure out what temperature that would occur, it would actually occur at negative 273 degrees Celsius. And so um, this is what we call absolute zero. At this pressure, no, um, no particles would be moving, right? And so uh, it would be a, um, it would be, um, it, it would occur at negative 273. This is what we call absolute zero. All right, so we should just know that absolute zero is at negative 273 degrees Celsius. If you extrapolate the line that we created, it would go to about negative 273 degrees Celsius. So uh, when we do equations or do math with gases, we always want to convert to Kelvin. The reason for this is that it makes everything positive. And so the e equation is that Kelvin equals the degree Celsius plus 273. So if I give you an example, convert 23 degrees Celsius to Kelvin, we know that Kelvin equals Celsius, which is 23 plus 273, that would equal 300 degrees Kelvin. So 223 degrees Celsius, oh, not 300, sorry, equals 296, right? 296 degrees Kelvin. And you don't even put degrees, you just put Kelvin. So I should really shouldn't say degrees, it's just 296 Kelvin. And if you want to convert back, convert 36 Kelvin to Celsius, so you got 36, I'm just plugging into this formula here, so 36 Kelvin equals degrees Celsius plus 273, subtract both sides by 273, and then you get uh, degrees Celsius equals 36, um, oops, 36 minus 273. <clears throat> and so that equals negative 237 degrees Celsius. Okay. And this is Guy Lussac's. What is the relationship between um, temperature and pressure? So as temperature increases, you would expect pressure to increase. Why? Those molecules are moving faster, causing more pressure. So this you would expect to be direct. So if we measured pressure versus temperature, we would expect it to look like that. That's what a direct relation, as temperature increases, pressure will increase as well. And so, it would look like this. P1 over T1 equals P2 over T2. That would be the, the, the equation. All right, so if we were to stop really early and summarize, uh, we want to be able to understand the relationship between um, pressure and volume, how it's indirect. We also want to know the, the relationship between vo volume and temperature, which is direct, as well as pressure and temperature, which is also direct. So we want to know how those equations look, or how the, um, excuse me, those graphs look. But when it comes to the equations, what I would prefer for you to do is I want you to combine all these laws into what we call the combined gas law. So the equation that you need to know in a combined gas law is P1 V1 over T1 equals P2 over V2 over T2. All I did is I combined all the gas laws together. 
So instead of remembering three different equations, I can remember this one equation, which can solve any, any problem when it com comes to any of those three laws. And let's just do some examples together. So this is a gas at 110 kilopascals and 30 degrees Celsius fills a container with an initial volume of 2.00 liters. If the pressure is raised to 80.0 degrees Celsius and the, and the pressure increased to 440 kilopascal, what is the new volume? <coughs> Immediately, I know this is going to be a combined gas law. Why? Because you're actually comp comparing two conditions. Your first condition is at 110 kilopascal, 30 degrees Celsius, and the initial volume 2.00 liters. Your second condition is 80 degrees Celsius and 440 kilopascals. To solve these problems, I actually just, I, I personally, this is how I do it, I'll write everything out. So I know there's going to be P1, V1, and T1, and I know there'll be P2, V2, and T2. So I'm going to make 110 kilopascals. Oops, let me rewrite that. So 110 kilopascal. I know my volume is 2. 0 0.00 liters, and then I know my temperature. Now, be careful here because this is 30 degrees Celsius. But I remember, remember, in any gas problem, we always convert to Celsius. So 30 plus 273, right? If I have degrees Celsius to convert to Kelvin, I got to add 273. So this is going to be 303 Kelvin. <clears throat> What's my next pressure? Well, now look, I need to solve the new volume, so I'm actually going to solve for that. What's my new pressure? Well, it's 440 kilopascals. This is actually okay, as long as your pressures are the same. Also notice, I know that kilopascals is a measurement of pressure, so therefore I know that 440 kilopascals is for pressure. And then this is 80 degrees Celsius. Don't forget to convert that. So this is going to be 353 Kelvin. All right, now that everything, I literally just plug it in. So I get a pressure is 110 kilopascal, right? Volume is 2.00 liters, and this is 303 Kelvin. This up here is, uh, let's see, P2 is 440 kilopascal. This is volume over 353 Kelvin. Okay, and so what I'm going to do is I actually cross multiply is what I do. So on one side, I'm going to work out, I'm going to multiply all these together, and I'm going to set it equal to this. Alright, so if I do this, now I'm going to, I'm just going to put my work up here so you can see. So I'm going to multiply 303 times 440 equals a really big number. 133083 oh, times V2. Right, I gotta remember this one. Now I'm gonna multiply this over here. This equals 353 times 2 times 110. This equals 77660. So I gotta divide both sides by this. Uh, 133083, right? So my volume is that divided by 133. I'm going to go to two sig figs. So the volume is going to be 0 0.58. And since I started with liters, my volume will be liters. OK? So if I initially have 4.0 liters of a gas at a pressure of 1.1 atmosphere, what will the volume be if I increase the pressure to 3.4 atmospheres? All right, so this is a good problem because it actually brings up an issue. So remember, we combined all the gas laws together, but not every problem requires all the gas laws together. So if you have something, if, you, uh, if there's something in the problem, like a variable you don't use, you don't have to include it. Let me just give you an example. So let me just identify all the, the variables. So if I initially have 4.0 liters at a at pressure of 1.1, so my volume is 4.0 liters, right? My pressure is 1.1 atmosphere. And I said, what will the new volume, so I'm going to find volume, if the new pressure changes to 3.4 atmospheres? 
Notice I didn't use temperature. Oop, that should be a two, shouldn't it? So, <clears throat> what I can do is temperature will remain constant. So, if, if which means it's not going to change. So, I can just ignore it. Like, I'm not going to worry about it. Which means when I look at my original problem, that's not going to be there. So, when I set this up, 1.1 atmosphere times 4.0 liters equals, and then P2 is 3.4 atmosphere times the volume of 2. So, this one's a pretty easy math problem. So, V2 equals... I'll go to three, uh, two sig figs, 1.3 uh, volume. My units are going to be liters. Okay. Now, let's see. I have quite a few examples, I believe. Um, let me just go back, and I'll do a couple of them with you guys. People who are angry sometimes say they feel as if they'll explode if a calm person with a lung capacity of 3.5 liters and a body temperature of 36 degrees Celsius gets angry. What would the volume of the person's lung be if the temperature rises to 39 degrees Celsius? So, remember the only equation I'm going to remember. Oops, let me see. Is P1. Oh, I know why. That is P1, V1 over T1 equals P2, V2 over T2, right? So, set it up. So what some of you already noticed that, hey, there is liters and there's degrees Celsius, but there's no pressure. So, I don't need to deal with pressure. So, my problem we'll just deal with v1 t1 v2 and t2 so i start with 3.5 liters and i start with uh, 36 degrees celsius but remember 36 i gotta convert to a uh, kelvin so this will equal 309 right kelvin um, i want to find the volume the temperature was 39 degrees here i want to convert that into so it should be 312 kelvin so if your temperature raises to 3 degrees Celsius, what's going to happen? Well, let's see. So let me plug it in. I got 3.5 liters over the temperature, which is 309 Kelvin equals. And then I got V2, which I don't know, 312 Kelvin. So we got 3.5 times 312 divided by 309. So I cross multiplied is what I did. So I got V2 to be about 3.53. So nothing really changes. So you probably would not explode in this problem. It says a gas is collected in a 242 centimeter cube or cubic centimeter container with a pressure of gas is 87.6 atmosphere at 25 degrees Celsius. So that's my first part, right? Uh, so P1, V1 over T, oop, that should be a 1 over T1 equals P2 over V2 equals T2. Alright, so, uh, let's see, 242 cubic centimeters, 87.6 atmospheres, and then 25 plus 273. So you get really used, really fast used to converting to Kelvin. You just, it's just automatic. Hey, what's standard temperature? Standard temperature is zero degrees Celsius, right? Plus 273, so that's gonna be 273. You wanna figure out the new volume, so that's what you, and then STP, so standard temperature is zero degrees Celsius, pressure is one atmosphere. All right, so now we have five variables. We wanna solve for the six. Let's plug everything in. So this is the one where I'm going to cross multiply.
So if I do this correctly, cross multiply, the volume is kind of crazy. The volume is 19420 centimeters cubed. Now I should do this to correct sig figs. Correct sig figs would be two. So 19000 zero, zero, zero centimeters cubed. I got two sig figs because this is has two sig figs. Okay, this might be our last one, huh? So put the equation in. Alright, so it says a 225 cubic centimeter volume of gas is collected at 57 degrees Celsius. What volume will you call P by STP? So when I first start, I have volume and I have Celsius. But notice I don't have pressure, which means I only have two variables. The one that's missing is pressure. So I'm not going to worry about it. I only worry about V1 and T1 and V2 and T2. So notice, if I know I'm not going to use a certain one, I can remove it, uh, and I'll just assume it remains constant, meaning it won't change during the reaction. 57 plus 273. What does that give you? Uh, what is that? 33, 34? 340 Kelvin? I think that's right. No, that's not right. Sorry, so what is that? Is that 330? I think that's 330. And then the volume, all right, so now we want to figure out the volume at STP. Now notice, STP gives you standard temperature and pressure, but we, we weren't given our initial pressure, so we don't need to know the pressure. Well, uh, what we need to know is the standard temperature. That's zero degrees Celsius. Add that to 273. So that's 273, of course, Kelvin. All right, so V1 over T1. Let's put that in. So we have 225 cubic centimeters over 330 Kelvin equals, and then you got V2, 273, so 225 times 273 divided by 330 gives me V2, uh, 186 point, uh, I think I only need, oh, I need two six figs, so let's do 190 cubic centimeters, I need two six figs because of that, so 190 cubic centimeters is your correct I have plenty of practice for you guys, um, as well as a key. There'll be a quiz tomorrow, and I also posted a, uh, a quizzes for you to do more practice.